Last month, I blood tested for the third time in 2025. And note that this is test number 60 since 2015. So with that in mind, what's my biological age? That's what we'll see here. This is using Dr. Morgan Levine's biological age calculator, PhenoAge. And if you have blood test data and you want to calculate your own biological age using this test, there's a downloadable link and a link from my blog in the video's description. So when entering these data, I get a biological age of 34.8 years, which is 17.4 years younger than my chronological. Now, a question that I often get at this point in videos like this is, how good is this biological age clock? How good is PhenoAge? And rather than going over that data eight times per year or every time after I blood test and then make a corresponding video, I made a video specific for, for that, which looks at how this clock correlates with chronological age and its association with all-cause mortality risk. So if you're interested in seeing how good this clock is or not, the, that video will be in the right corner. Now, note that I mentioned I've tested now 60 times over the past 10 years. So why so often? So I see a lot of people posting their, a single or two data points over, say, a three-year span, saying that this is their rate of aging. But it raises the question, how many days before testing is the test representative of? Is one test per year representative of a full year average? Is that really the rate of aging with one test per year? Some biomarkers change very quickly where others take longer to change. Now, I don't think anybody knows the answer to that question. So with that in mind, I've started testing more often, now up to eight times per year, as I think more tests and taking the average of all of those tests and then looking at year to year change is a better measure of the rate of aging relative to one or two tests over a year or a two year span. So with that in mind, for more context, let's take a look at year to year change for biological age since 2018, as I have 40 tests over that period. And that's what we'll see here. So this, so this is year to year change for biological age, again, over 40 tests since 2018. Now, starting in 2018 is when I included, started including HSCRP for every blood test so that I could calculate my biological age using PhenoAge. And back then, I was only measuring three times, or I only had data for three tests over a two-year span. Not much different from how I think most people are currently testing just a few times every couple years. So over those three tests, my average biological age was 34.3 years. But then I had the idea, how many, again, how many tests do I need to represent a full year average? So I started testing more often. In 2020 and 2021, six tests each, 12 tests total over those two years. And in each of those years, 2020, 2021, average biological age was exactly 33.9 years in each year. So although in my case, 34.3 over that two year span when I started, is in the same ballpark as 33.9, 2020 to 2021. It may not be like that for everybody else. In my case, it happened to be relatively remarkably consistent, but it may, may not be like that for everyone else. In 2022, though, I increased the two seven times per year, and I had my best data yet with an average biological age of 32.1 years. Over another seven tests in 2023, it got a bit worse, 32.9. Moving in the wrong direction again in 2024, but this time after eight tests, I increased the testing frequency by one to 33.1 years. And then after the first three tests in 2025, current average is off to a great start. Currently my best ever uh, or so far, 31.9 years. And that includes 34.8, which is not as good as the first two tests. Now note that if I stopped testing after, of, after those first two tests, I would miss these data points, 34.8 or whatever the other data will be for the rest of the year. So again, I think it's important to, to measure often and take the average of all of those tests for a given year and then track that year to year as the best approach for studying one's rate of aging. Now note that using this test, even if all biomarkers stay the same, phenoage increases by 0.9 years for every year of chronological age. So starting in 2018, multiplying 0.9 years by eight years that have passed, we would expect that my average phenoage in 2025 should be closer to 41 years. Instead, we can say that I've resisted that age-related increase. So that's good news because I've been able to make biomarker progress, and I covered some of that in the last biological age uh, series, B8 Biological Age 2 test, where I went through the RDW data and how I've been able to reduce that over the past eight years. Now, this is just part one of this video series. In the next, 
We'll take a look at the full blood test report. Anybody can just enter data into a spreadsheet and say that this is their biological age. I'm fully transparent. I have nothing to hide. I show everything in the blood test data, full lab test report, good and bad, and then what I plan to do to address the bad and what I plan to do to keep the good good. And then also, what is the diet, supplements, and prescription meds that may underlie this 17-year younger biological age? So stay tuned for those videos coming up soon. If you've ever wondered what's optimal for biomarkers, well, I have a new Patreon tier dedicated just to that. This isn't a focus on the reference range. This is what may be optimal based on how each of these 29 biomarkers changes during aging and or their association with all-cause mortality risk. It currently includes more than two hours of video content, and I'm planning on expanding it. I have another three biomarkers that are going to be added to that tier coming very soon from 45 published references. So if you're interested in that, check it out. And if you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, I post at least twice a day in five different Patreon tiers, including blood test consults, but four other tiers. We've also got a bunch of discount and affiliate links that you can use to test yourself that help support the channel, including ultalabtest.com, which is where I get the majority of my blood tests done, the clearly filtered water filter, at-home metabolomics, or a microbiome composition, NAD testing with Ginfinity, epigenetic testing with True Diagnostic, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes Grimage, which was in the last video, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, and note that this version is not yet in the YouTube store. It's in another store that has not yet linked with YouTube. So if you're interested in getting one of these shirts, just leave a comment and I'll direct you to that store. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.